Training.com, CWI prep course. Come visit us at our website at train-eng.com, pronounced training. This is our CWI prep course. This is a, as you go through some of these videos, these will be some snippets or samples out of our online training course. If you like what you see here in the sample section, come and visit us and take the course. Our CWI, CWE online part A video course, $149. It's um, self-study, CWI exam. Everything's an online video course. CWI prep course, module one, part two, welding inspection and certification. Well, and then once you gathered up all your information and you've submitted it to the AWS and they um, kick you back the okay to take the test. Now we need to know what's on the test. Well, it's a three-part test. Um, part A is a two-hour, 150-question closed book test on the fundamentals of welding. Welding, metallurgy, you know, the whole uh, welding symbols, NDE symbols, all kinds of stuff like that. Just basic welding-related lingo and questions and concepts filler materials, uh, base materials, metallurgy, that kind of stuff. Part B is a two-hour hands-on test of 46 questions that requires the test taker to use visual inspection tools and a sample code book. They have a bunch of plastic weld samples. You go into a room and you answer 46 questions. Welds good, bad, or otherwise. Um, part C is a two-hour open book test of 40 to 60 questions on a code, usually API 1104 or AWS D1.1, depending on what your um, particular poison, I guess, is or what where you're going to be working. If you're in the oil industry, you probably want to go with 1104. If you're, you know, a structural guy and that's all you're going to de be dealing with, then you probably want to man up and take um, AWS D1.1 and run with that one um, but yeah depending on what you're doing they've got different tests AWS has got different tests that you can take part A of the CWI exam is fundamentals um, welding processes is 10 percent heat control and metallurgy weld examination welding performance definitions and terminology that's 12% definitions and terminology. That's a big one. That's the biggest portion. So if you can speak the lingo and get some points there, that is, that's a pretty good start. Symbols, welding, and NDE, 10%. Need to know how to read weld symbols. Uh, test methods, NDE, that's 8%. Reports and records, 6%. Duties and responsibilities, 4 Safety, 5 Destructive tests, 4%. Cutting, brazing, and soldering are 3, 2, and 1%. Um, you can see how the layout, or, you know, this is the percentage of what's on the test. So, you know, if you uh, take a look at this and, you know, see what you need to study for this portion, none of it's rocket surgery, but it's just learning the, you know, learning the welding world and what the definitions, it's kind of like learning a new language. So you need to kind of immerse yourself in it and go for it. This is how uh, Part B, the practical, breaks out. It's on procedures and welding qualifications. That's 30% of it. Mechanical and test properties is 10%. Welding inspection and flaws, 36%. You need to know welding inspection and flaws. Discontinuities and defects and the terminology and definitions involved in welding inspection and flaws you know overlap undercut convex concave fillet welds all those all those words need to be an integral part of your vocabulary you need to have a thorough understanding of them part b is usually the thing that trips people up so you need to you need to have a really good understanding of weld inspection and Rightfully so. You're going to be a certified weld inspector. You should have a very thorough knowledge of what's going on with weld inspection. 
Um, NDE is 10% and utilization of specifications and drawings 10%. So if you understand procedure and welder qualifications and you understand welding, inspection, and flaws, that's 66%. You need to get to 72%. So you just need to, if you got those two sections nailed down, you just need to go another, um, pick up another uh, 10 or 12% and you're golden. So, you know, strategy here. Not that you don't want to learn all of this stuff 100%, but um, you don't want to spend a disproportionate amount of time on utilization of specifications and drawings and, you know, completely blow off weld inspection and flaws. But anyways, that's kind of outside the bounds of where I should be, but Anyways, Part B, practical, that's the breakdown of the percentages of the material cover. Part C, code book applications. This part of the test, the CWI test, is an open book part of the test. So how it's going to break out is materials and design is going to be 10% of it. Fabrication is 30% of the grades. The question is going to be 30% um, of the questions are going to be on fabrication. 25% of the questions are going to be on inspection, and another 30% are going to be on qualification. So that's your breakout. You really need to be um, aware of the book that you're going to be taking the test, whether it's ASME Section 9 or API 1104. You know, you need to be aware of what's in there. You need to go in there and tab some things and have your game up. Don't go in there and the first time you've looked at the code book is when you go into the test. You, I had a friend that took the test and his his version of the code book, he had been through that thing back and forth, front and back multiple times. He had read that book cover to cover before he took the test. So just, you know, you want to be familiar with it. You want to take a few weeks of reading that book. You don't have to memorize it, but you just need to be aware that there's certain things in there and when they ask a question, you're like, oh, I remember seeing that in Clause 4 or Clause 3 or, oh, that covers materials and design. So you need to understand that, you know, this is a 500-page book and there's going to be some subtleties in there and there's going to be some trouble finding things. So any amount of familiarity you have with that book will help you in the long run. Code subjects available in current exam editions. Um, when you go to take the test, you can take the test with a number of different codes. You're not just stuck with one. There's a lot of different uh, options you have. The two biggies are AWS D11 Structural Steel Code. You can take that in the 2010 edition, second printing. Um, API 1104 Pipelines, 25th or 21st editions. You can take structural aluminum, which is D12, AWS D1.5, which is bridge welding code, 15.1, which is railroads, 17.1, which is aerospace, uh, ASME section 9, B311 and B313, and ASME section 8 and ASME section 9. So there's a couple of different routes you can go on this kind of a pick your poison type of deal in regards to take what you know best if you're a pipeline guy you probably don't want to take structural steel or if you're structural steel you probably don't want to dabble in pipelines so um, just uh, play to your strengths it's your choice figure out which code you're strongest with and what's going to make the best uh, sense for your career years down the road and go with that one so that's a a choice you need to make in regards to the exam additions and which makes the most sense for you. Successful completion, passing the exam. Okay, so you need to pass all three parts. Passing score for each part of the CWI exam is 72%. You need to get 72 on all of them. Passing grade for a CAWI is 50%. Um, the test candidate must undergo an eye examination to ensure that the individual possesses adequate vision, whether natural or co corrected. So you go see an eye doctor and you have them give you an eye test, and then they sign off on that and you send it to the AWS. Um, the CWI certificate does not state what code the inspector used on the examination. A CWI is qualified to use and interpret any welding code or standard. So just uh, stay in your swim lanes as far as 
what you know, but um, you know the if you take it with D11, it doesn't mean that's the only one you can work to. It just means you took the test with that one, but you can work to any code. So a large part of the CWI's job is the review and interpretation of specifications, codes, and contact documents related to welding and fabrication. This is the pool you're going to be swimming in. So you need to know, you need to be able to read and review and interpret specifications, codes, and standards. Big, huge part of the job. That gets back to vocabulary and welding terms. You need a strong understanding of the proper terms and definitions that are used in welding and fabrication, which gets us to the third bulleted item. It's not a bad idea to have access to AWS 3.0 standard welding terms and definitions. This is a great book to have on your bookshelf. Um, you're not going to probably use it every day, but when you need it, it's there. Kind of an ace up your sleeve type of deal. And uh, just, you know, if it, this as I've stated before, a lot of this welding stuff is just like learning a language. A lot of it is terms and definitions and understanding some concepts and then be able to, able to effectively communicate those concepts words, thoughts, and ideas to other people so that everybody's on the same page while you're making, fabricating, welding, and doing these things. Some terms and definitions we're going to go over. API, the American Petroleum Institute. It's a technical society that provides technical guidance to the petroleum industry. API 1104, the API standard welding of pipelines and related facilities. This standard is often used in construction of cross-country pipelines. ASME, American Society of Mechanical Engineers, the technical society which provides technical guidance for pressure containing vessels and equipment. ASNT, the American Society for Non-Destructive Testing, the technical society which provides technical guidance for non-destructive examination. AWS, American Welding Society, the technical society which provides technical guidance and leadership in all phases of welding. Some more terms and definitions. AWS 3.0, the AWS standard terms and welding definitions. This standard defines welding related terms with standard definitions. AWS B 5.11, the AWS specification for the qualification of radioactive radiographic interpreters. AWS D1.1, the AWS Structural Welding Code, used worldwide for construction of buildings and structures. AWS D1.5, the AWS Bridge Welding Code, used in the U.S. for construction of bridges. AWS D15.1, the AWS Railroad Welding Specification, Cars and Locomotives. This specification covers welding of railroad cars and locomotives. Terms and definitions continued. CWI, Certified Weld Inspector. CASH, an acronym for Knowledge, Attitude, Skills, and Habits. The basic tools of a weld inspector. NDE, Non-Destructive Examination. The act of determining the suitability of some material or component for its intended purpose using techniques that do not affect its serviceability. NDE is the preferred term per ANSI slash AWS. Sometimes you'll hear NDT, Non-Destructive Testing, in here too, but... NDE is the preferred term. QC1, the AWS standard for AWS certification of welding inspectors, defines the requirements and programs for the AWS to certify welding inspectors. SNTTC1A, this is the American Society of Non-Destructive Testing recommended practice, personnel qualification and certification in non-destructive testing. It outlines the certification program for NDT technicians. Summary, Module 1, Part 2. In this part of Module 1, we covered CWI test content. We went over, you know, Part A is closed book test on fundamentals. Part B was the hands-on test where you look at some plastic samples and you review the, you look at them and then you make a determination as to whether or not they're rejectable, acceptable, you disposition those. Part C is an open book test based on the code. So you take it on AWS D1.1 or 1104 or ASME Section 9, whatever part that they give you. Um, 
We touched on the different code subjects available, and then we talked about welding terms. Uh, the different you got to have a strong vocabulary in welding terms if you're going to pass the CWI. That can't be stressed enough. The, the, it's a completely different language. It's like learning Hebrew or Farsi or Russian. You got to put some time into learning the welding terms, especially if you're coming from a non-welding background. Maybe you're a quality control person and then coming in to take the the welding test, or maybe you don't have a real strong background in the welding side, but or maybe just you're a welder and you're trying to take the test and you know a lot of you might not have a strong vocabulary in welding terms. Anyways, vocabulary can't stress it enough. You need to really buckle down and do the welding terms. So that's the information that we covered in summer. The that's the summary of module one, part two. Um, now we'll move on to module two. Unlike a lot of other programs, we've got it set up so that you can do it a la carte. Um, if you only need to, you know, we've got different parts of the CWI course broken out. So if you don't need to sit through and take safe practices for welding inspectors or you have some strengths that you know of and you want to streamline the process and only hit the sections where you don't really have a strong or strong background or a great deal of proficiency, our program is set up so you can take some of these parts of the CWI online course a la carte. Pick and choose, put together what you want, leave the rest, like a Chinese food buffet. We've got one section where it's questions, questions, and more questions. Um, we've got a whole number of CWI self-study question bank, 40 bucks. Come on in, take it, take a look, see. Um, if you just need questions, if you've sat through another course and you just want to keep hitting the material, check out our uh, question bank, 40 bucks.